listening to City Gates Christian Center podcast, bringing a message of hope to the lonely, broken, and wounded. Our aim in the 90 days is to highlight God in our lives. We highlight God. And uh, it's not that because God is not up there, it's not that God is not powerful, but as we draw near to Him, we made intentional steps to prioritize Him, to make Him big in our lives. He's already big, but we say, Lord, I am allowing you, I am highlighting you, then God can perform lots of wonders and miracles at the Amen? And so, by growing deeper, you know, we spend more time reading the Bible, by growing deeper, you know, we uh, join our morning prayers, uh, we come before God in worship. Now, how many of you are excited every time we worship the Lord? Now, when we sing songs to the Lord, we say, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs. And so we're, we give out our praise, we sing to you. And all these things, it's very wonderful. There is something that happens on the inside of us the moment we tap into God. Do you believe that? The moment we reach out to the Lord and in faith, we grow deeper. You know, something happens. Something amazing. Cannot be explained, you know, by science. But nonetheless, it is powerful enough to bring a transformation. In the 90 days, we're also highlighting our connection with one another. And I would see, you know, networks upon networks. And I know some network that just bonded recently. And they went to the swimming pool. And how, how many of you know it's fun to be with friends? It's more fun to be with family. And the desire is the 90 days na mo makabanta sa atuang mga kaisunan. As family. Now we are individuals looking for a community. And part of our testimony that was shown is that person na longing for a community. Some of us are here in Cebu, we don't know a lot of people. And so, a church, as a church, we offer that community. And as a community, we're not some weird people. We're some, you know, normal people that lives in a normal world. Normal or what? You'll notice in church, they're normal people. And uh, the messages we would hear, uh, by the grace of God, we want it to be uh, something that connects to us. Na tinood ang mga mensahe na mga lungga na to, kanang dili sci-fi, dili realistic. And God's Word is always relevant. Ang pulong sa gino, dili lang na siya kay importante, relevant po na sa itong mga ibang batik karoon. 90 days, we're also talking about sharing greater and better. And yun ni ni Jok Jok yung ganina nga, you know, game one. Ayaw tandugan ang game one. We're talking about mastery. A master is not deterred just by one loss. Amen. Master gali, kalma lang nga. So, that's, that's, that's what life is all about. Mastery. Amen? And so, see you in game two. It's about this, you know, fun. It's about the joy that we have when we're able to share. Okay? It's, it's the um, fulfillment that we get. And instead of us, it's good to receive. But Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. Now, it's good to receive. There's nothing wrong with that. And we, if we become a recipient, and we are all going to be recipient, we are all recipients sa gugma sa gino, every single day. And karon lang 90 days, ma-highlight, makita na to, wow, God, you're so generous. But then, you know, the moment we shift our focus in the next 90 days, Lord, I'm going to be more generous. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be steward of the resources you've given me. And then you realize, wow. What a benefit it is. And so we're highlighting these things. And as I've said, next week, you know, it's one of our highlights in which we will invite our friends. Okay? I'm going give, to be giving out some cards for you to give out to your friends. How many of you will invite your friends next week? 
and we're going wider is because of the love of God that compels us. And as you will hear in a little while the message, you know, that uh, we cannot exhaust this message. I cannot do justice to this verse in the story of that prodigal son. Now we could not exhaust it enough. We could not even, you know, understand fully the love of God that was displayed in that story. So this morning, I want our hearts to be prepared. I want us to have an understanding that God wants to restore people. God wants to redeem people. And so it is in this context that we are entering these 90 days of challenge. It is the 90 days that we are highlighting God. We are allowing God, Lord, move in my life. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church. This is no man's church. It's nobody's church. This is God's church. And he said, I will build my church. And the, all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And with this verse, we see, Unas God. It is God that will build His church. And then we can see that the, the powers of hell, the devil, will not allow the church to be built. He will try His might, His best, to destroy the church. But the great thing in this verse, because this is Jesus Himself saying that my church will prevail. And the good news is, you are the church. The church is not some kind of a building. It's not some kind of a religion. It's not some kind of an organization. We are the church. Church means ecclesia, where it means the called out ones. God has called you to be amongst His people. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we become His. We become a daughter. We become a son. And so we become part of the community that the Bible calls church. It is a concept coined by the Romans. The church is like a platoon. They're the elite force. A church. When you say church, platoon or a group of army staff. Special action force. Church is a military term. And so God's mindset, when He says, when the, when the word church was mentioned, I will build my church, meaning my people will be the called out ones, there'll be, there'll be special action force, they will represent me, I will build them. Yes, they will have an enemy who will seek to destroy them, but they will prevail over and against the enemy. Amen. That's wonderful news. The Lord owns us. He promised to build us. His original intent is for us to experience dominion, abundance, power. His intent is for us to have joy. Ang gusto sa gino sa inyong tapat, nga may himo siyang victorious. Amen. Ignan mong tapat, impasko kang. That's the greatest victory in the world. Amen. Nowadays, loneliness abounds. There's a lot of heartbreak makita na to. Disappointments, dissatisfaction. Many are longing for victory and success only to have it for a little while and then mawala pagkauma. Short-lived, temporary. Unay problema sa kalibutan. Our Back to Church Sunday is a campaign that calls for everyone to come back to God's original intent for mankind. That's why we can be bold in inviting our friends because it is an invitation to experience the power of God. In as much as ikaw na experience sa kugma sa gino, we share it out to others. We have guests this morning. If you are here for the first time, mapakala to to mga guests karong kabutago. There are about nine of them. And you know what? And now I'm going to invite my channel. Thank you. Thank them for they invited you because they want you to experience the goodness of God. We're not here to experience a religion. We're not here to experience some kind of a teaching from, you know, from a man. It is from God Himself is 
gonna speak with us. And this is His intent for you. For you to have life. To have it to the full. God knows that there's so much need around us. God knows a lot of people are missing out on the best things of life only because they have been far. By choice or by circumstance, it differs. Naglailahi ang inungdan why people are not close to God. But our campaign, and this 90 days challenge, in which it, it encapsulates the Back to Church Sundays, and starting this coming Sunday is our Back to Church Sunday specials. And it's gonna be four Sundays wherein it's not just for our invites, but for us. Para po sa tua, na kita mismo maka-experience sa gugma sa ginoo. We've always known the intent of God, but we also know the intent of the thief, the devil, which is to steal and kill and destroy. The thief's purpose, the devil's purpose, is to steal, kill, and destroy. However, Jesus said, my purpose is to give them life, to give them a rich and satisfying life. So, this connects to Matthew 16, 18, where he says, I will build my church. I will give them a rich and satisfying life. And so, may tanga back to church. Wow, more back to school. Indeed, sounds like. And besides, it's back to school next week. No? But dili lang siya back to school. This is back to church. You know, school can be burdensome. Ang uban malipay kay nai balik allowance. But for most people, you know, School can be burdensome at first, excited pa kayo, pero pagka July and August, wala na bukat na kayo notebook. Bukat na kayo ang libro. After one month, sayon na lang kayo ang pag-absent. Amen. Sama sa akong istorya sa kabata, na ang iyang lula nakakita sa iyang maestra kapadulong. Dung, tago, dung. Kaya na yung maestra ay kapadulong. Yung ng bata, lula, ikaw na yung tago, lula. Nga kung may mo tago, kung ikaw may niya absent. Tago, lula, kaya akong ingon sa kong maestra, mo absent ko, kaya namatay akong lula. Tingnan mo tapat, ayaw ang patago, ay mong lula. Church, school can be burdensome, but church, God, can never be burdensome. Coming back to God is not burdensome. What is burdensome is being away from the Lord. And so as I've said, I cannot do this chapter enough justice. So allow me to share this again. And so we can understand, you know, and how the Lord may speak to us again about a story that each, of, each one of us can relate. Okay? In Luke chapter 15, as we read the story, Read through this first. Now, to illustrate the point further, Jesus was speaking to a group of religious people. He was speaking to them. Now, and uh, he was telling them, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. That wild, wild living. Spent all his money, wasted his life basically. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home. How I many of you know the best decision is to go home? Nothing. 
Sige na. No place like home. When he came to his senses, he said, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. And I will go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy being called your son. Please hire me as take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. And he killed the calf. He said, kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, we looked at this and makaingontang uh, sa kay gibati sa anak. He was expecting bunalan siya. He was expecting disiplinahon siya. He was expecting na i-reject siya. But the father was there. This is what we've experienced. The moment we came to the Lord, we feel unworthy. But He received us anyway. Amen? And so, as we explain this, no? as we look at this, it is a parable that Jesus gave a parable is an earthly story with heavenly significance. Jesus made this story to show the religious leaders during his, his time that the most important thing that matters to God, it is when, not when we acknowledge and, and we do our religious activities, it's not when we become part of a certain affiliation and all these things, what matters to God is dili lang ka nang naata because a lot of people pwede na ha pwede kang nagsimba pwede kang nagsangpit sa gino pwede kang religyoso kayo just like the Pharisees but their lives are not experiencing the change God wants them to experience a lot of people they go to church again and again they read their Bibles well, maybe not but nonetheless People would consider religion as something to, to behold, something to be part of. But that part of their lives is not changing their lives. And so Jesus was showing them how a lost person, how a rebellious person, how this younger son, despite nga naglayas, but the moment ni Balik, he embraced the apple sa gino. Amen. He showed them, therefore, it's not enough to be religious. What is important is we acknowledge that we need God. What is it? You are religious, but yet your life is not changed. And you do not acknowledge God, the importance sa kinoo sa imo ang kinabuhi. And so as we can see in the story, a few things there, no? Uh, this guy, he packed his belonging, he moved to a distant place. And uh, he wasted his money in wild living. At some point in our lives, a lot of us have wandered away. And there are friends, Anato, we know that have wandered away. We can, you know, relate to that because we And I know my life for one has been a life that has wandered, you know, my energy and resources on a lot of things. Things na dili makasatisfy. And so at that point, we feel distant to God and we seem to be enjoying it for now, for a while. Just like this guy, hurot, pero pagka hurot sa kwarta, wala ragyapon, na hurot ragyapon. And his money ran out. It won't be long until we realize that the things that this world can offer is often short of satisfaction and fulfillment. The things that we can have here, they are important for survival, but they are not enough for us to thrive. There are other things that are not tangible. There are other things that 
bears so much significance such as our spiritual walk with the Lord, such as peace, such as the security that God is with us, such as the favor, those things, dili na to na makwinta, pero mo na'y kina-offer sa ginoo. O kung wala na sa to ang kinabuhi, we will be like this prodigal son who went his way knowing anyhow I have lots of money, I am skillful, I have, I have this favor upon me and all these externals. But at the end of the day, ang hulot At the end of the day, magmahay lang ihapon. And so, we present kita mismo. If you consider yourself close to God, and we want to be close to God. And if we feel like that, and if we have been experiencing the goodness of God, then we can understand, we can relate, and we can say, Lord, thank you so much for giving me this much joy. And Lord, it's my responsibility to share this joy to others as well. Knowing that there will be emptiness without God. Without God, we are nothing. Amen. Without Him, we violate our convictions. Nobody really wants to eat pots. It's a lowly diet. It's food for pigs. But in this situation, the young man, it says there, became so hungry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. Nobody really wants to say an addict. Nobody really wants to stay a gambler. Nobody wants to be a smoker. Nobody wants any one of us Dili ta gusto magpabilin sa bandage that we are in, sa loneliness that we are in. Nobody wants to to stay in this, you know, uh, oppressive mindset. I'm no good. And daghag mga pangunahuna na dili ta gusto magpabilin diha. Even dili ta gusto pabilin atong pamilya nga sama ingo nana ingo nana. Nobody wants to stay poor forever. Nobody. In life. However, many people are eating pods. All they have. Ang naalang yun ay tao niya, magunita nila, are the things niya. Huna-huna nila, at least makasurvive. But as we have said a while ago, God does not want you just to survive. God wants you to thrive. You need to belong where God's blessing is. And coming back to God, coming back to church, that's why we have Back to Church Sunday, Sunday specials starting next week. It's not only for us. Yes, we will be benefited from it because God will speak to us, teach us, impart to us, anoint us. There's a lot of things God can do every time we come to Him and worship on a Sunday. Amen. There are so many benefits when we come to church. The Bible said, Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, what other people are doing. Okay? So let us not forsake. Because God knows there's so much blessing when we are in the house of the Lord, when we are in the community. But you know, it's not just for us. It is for the people around us who are eating pods. It is for our friends who we know that their lives can get better. We know that that's not all it yet sa ilang mga kinabuhi. And we have to feel the heart of God. As we have looked in the story, we need to understand kung kanil nga bata makaduol sa kinu, I know daghan pag may tabo. I know things can happen. Daghan mga milagro may tabo sa iyahang kinabuhi. Somebody said, in this life, there are few people who own a house. Most of them are owned by their houses. It's sad, but, you know, we've looked at fame, we've looked at finance and money, and we have overrated them, we've placed them in a place where I believe they're important. But the most important is God, and He gives us those things. Everyone here on earth is hungry for something they don't know. They tried success at school in their jobs. We've tried drugs, we've tried alcohol, men or women or fame, money, but still we're left hungry. 
this guy, nobody left, nobody gave him anything. At the end of the day, no one gave him anything. He's still thirsty, he's still hungry. And then a dramatic turnaround, he came to his senses. <laughs> now we've come to our senses. And then we've come to our senses. And then he said, Mubaliko. This young man remembered where he came from. He knew he made a mistake. He did wrong. He was ready to repent. He was rehearsing his peace. Ang insulti, I'll go back to my father. Mone akong istorya. So sa balay, naghagpakaon supra. I will tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. I have sinned against you. Kadumdum siya sa iyahang balay. Kadumdum siya na naghagpakaon dito. Isa ng ilahang mga helper na helper. Ato bang ginastuli? Naman na siya, buti ko daw aton. Ang kahelper, mag-apply ko pagkairo. Kaya may mga kumawaw. Nairo sa mga humpa ang sita. He remembered the food. But he is not sure that the father will still accept him. So he assumed, he assumed that he is already an outcast and better settled as a slave. Muna yung niya nga, Father, I'm not worthy. Kapag tako namin itong sadaan ta, kita may magunaon na. Diba? But I want to show us this morning in our message to encourage us to come to the Lord and to encourage us to invite others to come to the Lord. At least there are three benefits of coming to God. Alright? First one. In verse 20, it says, So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. A lot of our invites, I know, kung inyo silang i-invite next week, or even karon or katuma, na-invite ninyo the other week. Many people like when you were invited. You're expecting in your mind church. Kasi mga out of place ta. Diba sa mga video sa pakita gayon. Um, dili ko ang ayan unya nagpabuutan ako ayan ko simba. Kisa sa inyo yung nanaw na una. Um, basig masangko ako sa sungay. <laughs> Mogi na kanunay madunggan ako. I was growing up. Unya na ako simba ug mabutan ako. But this guy he understood he needs to come home. There needs to be that understanding from all of us. But the thing is, when we're coming back to God, we need to erase that faulty mindset that the devil has placed in our hearts and our minds. And that mindset is, no, what if? But as you can see, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. The first benefit of coming back to God, say it with me, acceptance. There is acceptance. God accepts you no matter who you are, no matter where you've been. Obviously, God knows where you've been. God knows who you truly are. Kaila ang ginoo sa imo tungod kay gikan ka sa ginoo. And so we are not quick to judge people around us. We're not quick to say we can be wary and fearful of inviting this kind of people and that kind of people and all this. But nonetheless, God is so merciful. God is so loving. He came home for food. But he received far more than food. The Father loves us unconditionally. And despite what you have done, you may think you don't deserve his love. You may say, I don't have, I don't, I have done so much, I'm not worthy of his love. You have no choice. 
Because 2,000 plus years ago, God already embraced you at the cross. Acceptance. I pray that God will burn this message again in our hearts. That with Him, there's always that acceptance. That's the benefit of coming back to God. He accepts you. It's now our decision, will we accept that love? Nowadays, acceptance is rare. Rejection is common. Maybe you have been rejected by your parents. A lot of the people around us, they have been rejected. So school is always the... It's a, it's a fight to survive. It's a survival of the fittest. It's always that person who has placed the, we always put the best foot forward in order to have an advantage because if we don't, we will be rejected. And we live in a cruel world we're in. Kundi ka mayong mag, in English, kundi ka ka mathematics. Hindi ka mawag English, hindi mawag mathematics, hindi pwede yung science. Magpastor na lang. <laughs> Kailangan ang mga standards. At ito ang Bible school na kay para mabutan. And we live in a cruel world wherein kung dili ka, kamawaan eh, kamawaan na, then you are judged as a failure. But with God, no matter what your academics, kung sa inyo ang background, you are always accepted. This season, if you have felt the acceptance of God, if you have felt the love of God, let's have an eye on the people around us that are rejected, that have low self-esteem, and let's invite them. Let's tell them how much God loves them. We need acceptance. Bisa kunsa ka accomplished na person, you would always want someone to affirm you and to say you're doing good, right? Ano man na oso, na oso ang mga selfie? Na, na oso kusog man ang ato ang social media? As much as we deny it, but the moment we post something, tanaw na to kisa ni comment, tanaw na to kisa ni like, tanaw na to kisa ni approve lang, tanaw na to kisa ni heart. Amen, hindi matapad, I accept. God accepts us. No matter who we are, bisag dili kayo not worthy ang atuang mga accomplishments, He accepts us. Our kids, they are raised in such a way. They're not, uh, they are not fearful whether we would no, accept them or not. They know they will always be accepted as much as we always hug them, we always kiss them, we always affirm them, but every time makasala sila, every time, almost every time, JV would always say, Will you forgive me? What kind of thinking? Asa mo na gigan na panguna-huna? Wala na mo sila gitudluan na mahadlo. Nobody. You know, it's our culture, sa pamilya, na mahimong forgiving and all. But there's always that mindset na kung makasala ta, Will you forgive me? Let me tell you, God always forgives. And it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. A lot of times, we feel like we don't deserve the blessing we're getting because for all we know, daghat ng mga ginabuhat na dili maayo, but yet God still blesses us. Never mistook God's blessing for His approval. Because if you've committed a mistake, God does not approve of it, but because of His love para sa mo, He may still favor you and bless you. And that should be enough for us to remember, the Lord, grabe kay ka, maka-accept. reject. But let's not abuse God's kindness and His love. We also know of God's the consequences of our actions, such as in this story. The moment na palayo ang batanon ng lalaki, and dito nagsugod ang daghan ng drama sa iyang kinabuhi. Hindi tama palayo sa kino until realize na to that there's so much pain away from the Lord. And so rejection is common, but God's love does what is uncommon. His love.
accepts us. Coming back to God brings acceptance. You are accepted. Meaning God wants you to bring, God wants to bring back the best in you. This son, di na may spilling ang iyang dagway. Pagbalik, animahong kagwang. Kailang kagwang. Si Jubilee ang mag, si Moton, ang kagwang. Kami siya ng kagwang. Katungog na mo ng atar, animahong kagwang. Diba no? Mga nga nila, well, Wa siguro mo kadungog ka nang atar pero kadali ka na makasimpot ana. Okay. <laughs> There are a lot of times. Ani maho nang kaguang. Pero mga tawo nga dul na to ato gyapon gakso. Di ba? And so mga bata, bata pa sila, di ba? Infant pa ang mga bata, si Moton gyud ang ang baba, halos ang ilong usahay mo sunod silang baba. Kumot kayo. Di ba? Angel's breath. Di ba? Karoon yung mga dadko na, nanay nga ngipon nga ng adaot, usahay masimutan na po ilang baba, ilang, ilang ginawa. <sighs> angel's breath. Fallen angel. <laughs> di ba? So, but yet, the father accepts us. Ingon na na, kanako ang kugma samahan. Dili na to madis, you know, dili na to ma, uh, say tawag na, dili na to ma-underestimate ang kugma sa ganun, unsa siya maka-accept sa matay ko sa sato. And so with this understanding, kung gidawat manggaling ka sa ginoo, How in the world can we think that the people around us that does not deserve God's love? They deserve God's love and acceptance. The only thing that is lacking is for them to have an opportunity to come to God. And so ayaw tanawa ilang mga dagway, kaya yung dagway nagmurag kagwang tanawon. Ang ilang mga attitude murag kagwang. Kaya nga naman, kulang nagliko. Kaya nga matapad, murag ikaw sa una. Hadlok yung kag-imbitahon ng simbahan. Kaya na ni Mahot ang kagwang tanan. It is big. Puso may kagwang. <laughs> Trending kagwang. Huwag <laughs> ito gumulun sa ng kagwang. But anyways, but no matter how and who we are, God accepted us. And so with that mindset, we invite our friends. Lord, thank you so much. Imo kung gisay. I was once lost. Now I am found. Now it's my time to invite these people. And How many of you would like to see this place? We're already somewhat 80% full. But we will manage to squeeze in more chairs next week because it's got to be special. Amen? The love of God accepts. That's why we can make that decision. We can come back to God. Coming back to God is a good thing because He's already promised to accept us. Second benefit of coming to God, makita na to diha, No, uh, his son said, "O niya ang practice iyon siya na muli ko sa balay, and I will tell my father, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. O kina yung ipraktisa, dili na kuwang ayon. But what happened? Pagabot niya, his father said to his servants, quick." Bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Now listen to this. The most common problem mankind face, greater than poverty, greater than lack of acceptance, greater than sickness, the most common problem mankind is facing, greater than anything else, is this feeling of unworthiness. This feeling useless. Kining feeling ah, you have no control over your situation. The moment we run away from God, we develop that feeling, especially at the time we mess up. Maputos nagpagmahay. Many people, including myself, I feel like I am no longer worthy. 
I feel like I don't deserve God's love. And so, uslan man wai nagmahal. Those were the lines nga manggawas. Uslan man wai nagmahal. Bir paray. We continue with our erroneous thoughts. We continue with our lifestyle until we get to the bottom and we say, hindi na siya kumusap. And the next day, padayon lang ihapon. Because it is that feeling of unworthiness. Good thing, kini nga bata, he overcame that feeling and he went back to his father anyways. Ibalik lang yung kiyapon siya. All it takes is for us to have that, you know, strength. And I know that at some point in our lives, kitang tanan, we feel unworthy. But somebody invited us. Pasalamat ka nga nai nag-invite sa imuha. Pasalamat na ako dako. Diyo pasalamat. Because the friend who invited me keeps on inviting me. I keep giving the same excuse. Same excuse. Magtuon ko. I was in college and I was invited to church but I did not because I always drink. I have lots of vices. And katsawan na ako akong barkada kanunay. But one day, he just said, Tul, sabay na ba? Ugma. And out of the blue, I said, yes, I'll go. For no apparent reason, ninyo kung I will go. I didn't realize I was at the end of my rope. I was having depression. I was having all these things. And so, ubos kay ko, but then I was trying to be tough on the outside. But it was that moment, siya, Tul, sabay na ba? And I said yes. And I invite you niya sa 7 a.m. na service. I said, somehow I said yes. I don't know meron ni Sulti kung ang uaban ko. Because in my mind, hindi siya guganahan na ng mga ingunana. But then, you know, that night, nanungog pag yun ang yawa because I know that I said yes. But, that night, we had such a, an intense you know, session with friends. I was so drunk when I went home at about past 12 midnight and namang ko ay sa kanan, sa mumalay, kat-kat, ragawa na. Isa kong sa kahubog, Spider-Man ng gihap. And so, I don't know, I barely managed to, you know, sneak in. I passed out immediately the moment I hit bed. But, to my amazement, Pasayin ko na na, kasagara, umatawa na. Ayun na kayo ng alas jis. Sayo na kayo ng alas jis. But to my amazement, I woke up at about, I think, 5 a.m. I believe it was God who woke me up. I was awakened and I said to myself, I'm still groggy and all these things. Ano yung kusang gugaling? I need to go to church. I need to go to church. At 5 a.m. na ligo ko, okay, hangover pa, but yet na ligo ko, and wala ko yung mabuha kaya alas 6, alas 6 pa lang andam na kayo ko. Sige na kugatan na ako sa rilo. And the moment na ato ko sa building naman sa second floor, ang building, ang simbahan, ang tikumanan, makadumog na ko layo pa lang, gabuto-buto ng drums, so kung sa kabuto ang drums, kung may buto, so kung kasikasing. Kakulba. Because I don't feel like I am worthy. I feel like I'm a sinner. But it is the power of God that brought me to that place. And I was up. And then mulingi ko ana. And sa una, wa may asher. Sa mo, wa may asher. May madali kay pagabuti mo. Welcome! Di ba? Namin ka na sila mga smile ng mga asher. Kung pakpaka na ito itong mga ashers. As I was up, Hindi gamay, anong munao ko sa silong, hindi nalang ka ako matayon. Anong musaka na po ko, unya munao na po ko. Three times! The next time, paglingi na po na timing mo na nilingi, nag-abot ang munao. At then, nasyak siya, nasyak po ko, pero yung Gabriel, come in, welcome. Kasi kayo invite sa inyo, anong po ka ng kalayat-layat niya eh. Ganda-ganda ang invite sa inyo si Michael. I feel so worthless. I feel so rejected. But when I came back to God, He gave me acceptance. Secondly, nabalik ang authority sa ko ang kinabuhin. 
As I have said, we don't have control over our lives. Because the fact is, I was controlled by alcohol. I was controlled by addiction. I was controlled by insecurity. I was controlled by hopelessness. Because of such hopelessness in my life, I thought I would never finish college. Kundi tumod sa ginoo di ko pa human ng skwila. Because I was just there. Gabitay na lang yun din taon ko. And I, I, I don't come from a wealthy background. You know, I manage college only because um, scholar man ang mga kwapo sa mua. <laughs> no, naay mga yunala ng mga grants and scholarship and I was there, tungkol sa bisyo, tungkol sa pagpamuhat sa yawang. I was there, but I almost called it quits. You know, I have this background, may klaro akong kinabuhi, but yet, the moment I came to God, the moment I gave my life to Jesus, He gave me a sense of authority. He gave back that position that we all should be having, sons and daughters of God. Kining prodigal son, senyorito ni siya sa ilang balay, sa wapa ni Hawa. But the moment ni Hawa siya sa balay, sunugoon. Gabisan pagkaon sa baboy, mo na lang yung tangiyang kaunon, tungod ka wag yun siya yung makaon. That's what happens when we are far from God. Kung layo ka sa gino, mahimot ang sunugoon sa Yawa. Mahimot ang trap sa ito ang mga bisyo. We have no choice but to oblige. We have no choice but to follow. We become slaves. That's why when he returned, he said, Make me as your hired men because the nahuna niya, why pulos akong kinabuhi. But, kay pulos, pero mo barog na, Mike Sun. Barog na siya, balik. Thank you, Liz. Okay lang na, Liz. Okay lang na. Para 90 days. Okay, wrong grammar, pero 90 days ako balik. Amen. <laughs> Alright. Dili ta magpa-distract anong mga butang sa kalibutan. Asa na ko? Kato nga ba tanong ni lalaki, bisan mo, no, feeling niya nga dili siya takos, but ka, all of us, the moment magpalayo ta sa ginawa, we feel enslaved. We feel like we have no choice. We feel useless. Why pulos na itong ginabuhi? Muragway gahong kumusturya tawa tay tingog sa balay. It seems that so many fathers are losing authorities in their houses. Muna, mauso. Mauso ito mga under mga siya. Di ko under. Sagitan siya sa Berto, paglungag na. Sabar ya. Under pa i muna. Di ko ni mo under. Pila ka takos. So in a marriage, obviously, what may under under ana. But the point is, under ka sa yawa. Kung wala'y inuho itong kinabuhi, under ka sa yawa. Himutan niya ang sulugoon. Sa usahan na itong pagpangugat, wala'y mahita po. But the moment you connect to God, authority is restored. Robe, sandal, the ring, they're symbols of authority. A sense of control. Limang kaanak, anak na sing-sing, sandal, na robe. It's a symbol that you're a son. You are not a slave. You are not a vagabond. You are not a runaway. You belong to where God is. You belong. And you deserve God's best. That's why God is telling you today, so much benefit, so much blessing from the dual Saginaw. But there's so much that we will lose kung magpalayo ka sa Ginoon. We're not drawing near to any religion. Religion will never save us. City Gates as a group, as a community, we're not here so we can be marked as part of an organization. We are family. God is never raising a religion. God is raising His family. And we are part of a big family of God all over the world. We recognize His power over our lives and we are just local expression and so we become a testimony we become an encouragement and we have fellow churches even in what was the 90 days challenge because our aim is for national transformation reaching one soul at a time and so authority is restored lastly 
makita na to. Coming to God is such a powerful thing. When you come back to God, you know, you're back in control of your life. Dili nang yawa mag control sa yung kinabuhi. Coming back to God will increase your worth as a person. And so, when you come back to God, the benefit is there is acceptance. Kaduha, there is authority. Ikatulo. The moment ang bata, ang, ang younger son, sa dami yung ilit siya, ingon ang iyong papa, kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost but now he is found. So the party began. If you come to God and notice that as you invite your friends na makadol sa gino, they will not only receive acceptance, authority, ikatulo, they will also receive abundance. There is abundance. Before going home, this prodigal son, he lived in a life where it's always lacking. There was emptiness, there was despair. Now, fattened calf, baby. And paabot ang palpakuha, papait, uguban pang malalang mananap. Naiga paabot, tumuli ka. Amen? Hindi mo tapad, naiga paabot ni mo. Naghat mga maayong butang gianda ang ginoo. Ang ato mga invites karong Sunday, the moment they connect to God, as we invite them, kita dapat una ang convince and we tell them na paabot sa inyo. And we make it special for them. And I know all networks na sila yung mga klasik-klasik ang mga ibang prepare. We want to make it special for them. Amen? No, pag-abot pa lang diri atong i-greet, no? Atong i-lead silang likuranan, niya pagpauli kung puno ang elevator atong kubusod ba dong sino? <laughs> special to guy, di ba? No, we want to make it special for them. We treat them out whatever we do. Ato pagali ng efforts, wa pa ilabot ang Ginoo. Wa pa ilabot and the father in this story typifies that of a heavenly father. That the moment this prodigal son went home, he was restored. He was given authority. He was accepted. He ihawan pa. That's how God would lavish His love upon His children. Upon each one of us. Namubalik sa tilan sa amahan. And so believe that God has prepared abundance for you. God is a God of abundance. Pag may nakita nga nagservisyo sa ginoong na nagmahay. I for one is a testimony of how my life is so broken. But God has redeemed me. God has not only redeemed me, but He also, you know, God redeemed me, God renewed my life, and He restored my life. He gave me what I have been lacking all this while. And I tell you this morning, a lot of you have been missing out so much wonderful things because nalayo ko sa ginawa. If we confess to God this morning, say, Lord, I need you. God can move. Amen? God can move in our lives. And so before I close, let me share with us, you know, that uh, the story is not about the one who left. This is not also a story about the one who had babili. Although Jesus was giving this story to address the Pharisees, the God mga religious people, na they thought na sila simbahan, nagpabili sila, wala sila ni Elias, and okay na, that is enough. But they were never close to the Father. They were just having religion, they don't know God. So Jesus was telling this story to address them. Because sila muna-huna, Pag uli sa prodigal son, the story, usually what happens in their context, in their culture, kung na'y mulayas, pagbali ka na. Grabe na ang punishment. That person, that child can even be, you know, just excommunicated. No longer part of the family. Tinood na, serve up pagbali. But they were surprised at the amazing turn how Jesus ended the story. They were so surprised nga ang naglayas, gi-restore. Pero katunong nagpabilin sa balay, 
Putong sa storya, i-emphasize po ni Jesus, God, Jesus is a master storyteller. I-emphasize niya nga, nireklamo ako sa, wamang ko nilayas. May pasya imong gihawan. Ako ako ni mong gihawan. Ayos Jesus, you've always been in the house. Anything na ako, imo po doon ta. But you never capitalize on that. Proving that a lot of people can be in the church they have not capitalized on their relationship with God. As I've said, it's not about religion. A lot of people are so religious. They're having this religious experience, but they are never drawn close to God. Religion will not bring you transformation. It's your relationship with God that will bring you transformation. And so, it's back to church Sundays. It's not just for our guests. It's also for us. I'm excited. I myself, I'm excited to say, "Dutang sa gino sa mga mga mensahe, ano po pat, po pat ka mga Domingo." And so with that, it's not a story about the one who left. It's not a story about the one who nagpabilit. It's a story about the Father, the Father, the the greatest Father of all, the Father of abundance. And so this morning, we can believe that His intent is to love us. Let's be standing and um, come before God today. I want to pray for us. And that if you are here and you're saying, Yeah, I realize I've been in the house. I have accepted, you know, I have felt God's acceptance in church. You have experienced the benefit that accept God. You feel like na authority in your life, na na significance in your life, and God has given you abundance. Thank the Lord. Thank Him. And we can be grateful to the Lord. That's why this is an opportunity for us to be generous. We can be grateful by sharing our love to others, sharing resources to others, and saying to the Lord, Lord, thank you. Whatever you have given me, it's yours. I'm offering it to you, and we honor Him whatever form that is scriptural. But more than that, you know, let us also remember, Lord, grabbing a blessing ako na receive. I want to share this blessing to others. It's not about, you know, naghanggag my invite. 90 days challenge is not about counting days. It's day 7 or day 6 na it's about 7. It's not about counting days. It's about making each day count. So today, it's counted. We worship the Lord. Tomorrow is another day. We make it count. And so, when you're hit with a Monday blues, or a Tuesday blues, all week, make it count. When tomorrow you don't have nothing, still praise the Lord. Because it's only a moment of time. So they are sunny because they are aligned because they are going to go in. So you know, I guarantee you this. As in the Word of God, Luke 15 is a wonderful story of God's provision, God's acceptance, God's abundance, God's authority. You will have a sense of security. I want to invite us all to prayer. If we could lift our hands to heaven, I want to end. Briefly, because Father, we believe that you are a God of abundance. Father, we believe that because we, we're drawing close to you, and Lord God, because you have made yourself known to us, it is you who has given us back the reign over our lives. We now have control. We're no longer in bondage to such things of the devil because you've given us authority. And Lord, you have accepted us. Thank you for that. Lord, we are remembering, even at times when we lose these things, that the only solution is coming back to you. We're lifting up. Come on, lift up your friends right now. Those that you have in your list. Pray for your office mate. Pray for your classmate. Come on, pray for your, perhaps, your parents, your brothers, your sisters. Come on, let's be lifting them in prayer. That they will come as we invite them. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Opportunity to connect with them, Lord. Thank you so much. 
you said, O oh God, that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, that we're going to see in our generation, even this nation rising up. Lord, we're lifting up our nation amidst the attack, amidst the terror that the devil is trying to sow. Lord, we highlight your goodness. We highlight that in all these things, you are in control. We're not bothered. We are not, oh God, uh, terrified because you are our source of security and that you are in control. You are Yahweh. You are El Shaddai. You are so good to us. You are so amazing. And you can, you are in control, oh God. Thank you so much. I'm praying for each one of you this morning. Maybe it is you who feel like a prodigal son. I pray in the name of Jesus, receive your acceptance. I declare in Jesus' name, you can have authority back as you draw near to God. Do not miss the season of your life. This is not just the 90 days of challenge. This is a season where in the moment you highlight God, you will, He will open your eyes. Father, bless your people. Thank you for this Sunday that we are not only encouraged, but we are empowered. We are reminded, oh God, of how much you love us. We are reminded that, Lord God, uh, we feel, oh God, a touch from heaven. Your presence is enough. Lord, continue to convince your people. Continue, Lord God, to show us, as you have shown us in this story of the prodigal son, how much generous you are. Lord, how generous you are, how good you are, how, you, how much love you have for us. It is unconditional. We receive your blessing today. And Lord God, thank you for renewing our minds. Thank you for your goodness. We lift you up and we praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. And we celebrate God's goodness. God bless you all. As we go to our groups. For listening to City Gays Christian Center podcast. For more updates, like our page on Facebook at City Gays Christian Center or visit us at citygatescebu.org.